This video is part one of a two-part series on how to run your own Bitcoin Core node. In part one, I will show you how to verify your Bitcoin Core download. And in part two, I will show you how to actually run your Bitcoin Core node. Remember that Bitcoiners don't trust, we verify. So make sure not to skip this step. It is really important. So let's get right into verifying Bitcoin Core. Here I am on my computer. And the first thing you want to do is head over to bitcoincore.org. Next, just click download at the top over here. And now you'll need to download Bitcoin Core for whatever operating system you're on. So I'm on Mac OS with an M1 chip. So I'm going to hit DMG under Mac OS here. And now Bitcoin Core is downloading onto my computer. But now Bitcoiners don't trust, we verify. So what I want to do is verify that that software is authentic. To do this, we can just scroll down here and we can go to the Mac OS verification instructions. So the first step is to click the link of the list above to download your release. So we already did that. We already downloaded Bitcoin Core for Mac OS. Step two is download the list of cryptographic checksums. So I'm just going to click this. And step three is to download the signatures. So I'm going to just click this again. Okay, and as we can see over here, all three of my downloads have completed. Now this is where it gets slightly complicated, but just follow these instructions, look for the correct output. And if you receive the correct output, you know your software is authentic. Now we need to open our terminal. So I like to just search in the top right here, terminal, and it's this one over here. Now we're going to have to start running command line query. So the first thing we need to run is this cd download so i'm going to copy this paste it into my terminal and click return and now we're in my downloads folder so the reason we do this is because if i open my downloads i'll see that all three of these files are in my downloads folder so basically we're just telling the computer to change directory to downloads so now my terminal is basically looking into that downloads folder okay now the next thing we need to do here is verify that the checksum of the release file is listed in the checksums file using the following command. As long as you run this and you get the correct output, you'll be okay. So I go back to my terminal, paste this in and click return. And here we've got a whole bunch of outputs. And now what we need to do is look for this. So you can safely ignore any warnings and failures, but you must ensure that output lists okay after the name of the release file you downloaded. So here is the name of the release file I downloaded. I just need to see this file name and then OK. So if I scroll up here, here it is. So here is the name of the file and then I'm seeing OK at the end. So this is the correct output I should be looking for. So this step is complete. Now onto step six. It says if you haven't previously installed GNU Privacy Guard on your system, install it now. So Bitcoin Core recommends this, GNU Privacy Guard, but I recommend you get something called GPG Tools. So go to this website, it is called gpgtools.org, and just download this over here. Once you've downloaded that and gone through all the necessary steps, you'll have this as an application, GPG Keychain. So just open that and you'll need to create your own key. So they'll ask you for a name, email and password. You can just use a pseudonym or any email address you own, then pick a password and click create key. So I've already got my key, so I don't need to do this, but you'll just need to go ahead and do that quickly. So once you've got GPG Keychain up and running, we can head over to step seven. And step seven here says, Bitcoin releases are signed by a number of individuals each with a unique public key. And in order to recognize the validity of signatures, you must use GPG to load these public keys locally. So basically all the developers that develop Bitcoin have their own keys. We're gonna to have to load those onto our computer to verify the authenticity of the software. So it says here, you can find many developer keys listed over here, which you can then load into your GPG key database. So let's go ahead and open this in a new tab and you'll want to click keys.txt. And here we can see a whole bunch of Bitcoin developers and their public key. And let's move on to step eight. It is recommended that you choose a few individuals from this list who you find trustworthy and import their keys as above. And you will later use their keys to check the signature attesting to the validity of the checksums you use to check the binaries. So basically what we did earlier is when we got the OK output, we verified that this software is authentic according to this file. Now what we're going to do is verify that this file is authentic. So what we need to do here is choose a few individuals from the list who you find trustworthy and import their keys. I'm going to import three keys here that I trust and I'm going to explain to you the logic I use and why I trust them. 
So the first key I'm going to import here is Andrew Charles with this public key. And the reason I'm going to do his key is because I trust that this is the correct key. I know this because if I go to his key base and click his key over here, this key matches the key we see here in this file. So it starts in 1528 and ends in 5E41 and so does this, 1528 and 5E41. So I trust that this is actually Andrew Chow's key. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to open my GPG keychain, click lookup key, paste his key in and click enter. And here we can see Andrew Chow's key. I'm going to click import key and it says import successful. Okay, next I'll be importing, I believe his name is Antoine. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that, but I'll be importing this key. And the reason I trust this key is because if I go to his Twitter, I can see it starts in 590B and ends in 4304. And so does this one, 590B 4304. To take this a step further, if I go to his medium, we can see again 590B ending in 4304. So I'm gonna go back over to this, gonna copy his public key, open GPG keychain, click lookup key, into his key, return, and there we go, we found his key, I'm gonna click import. And it says import successful, so I click okay. And onto the next. The next key I'll be importing is Ben's, I think it's Ben Carman or Ben Carman, not sure. And this is his key here. And I trust this is actually his key because if I go to his key base, I can see that his key begins in AOD8 and it ends in 22A8. And if I go back to this file, AOD8 and 22A8. So that's correct again. So I do trust that this is actually his key. I'm gonna copy it, open GPG keychain, click lookup key, paste his key in once again and search for that. And there is his key, I'm gonna click import. And there we go, import successful. So now I've imported three developers keys. We've got Andrew, Antoine, I believe, and Ben. So now I'm gonna close all of these tabs. I'll link them below just so you can verify the keys yourself. And so now we've completed step eight. It is recommended that you choose a few individuals from this list who you find trustworthy and import their keys above. So we've done that, now let's look at step nine. So we need to verify that the checksums file is PGP signed by the release signing keys. So again, what we're actually doing here is we're making sure that this file here is actually signed by the developers. So we're checking that the checksum file is PGP signed by the release signing key. So what I'm gonna do is copy this line, open my terminal again, and I'm just gonna run clear and click return just to get rid of all of that. And I'm gonna run that line. So I paste it in and click return. And here we have a whole long output again. So it says here the command above will output a series of signature checks for each of the public keys that sign the checksums. So if I go back to my terminal here, we have to look for three good signatures. Firstly, a good signature from Andrew Chow, next Antoine, and thirdly, Ben. So back to my terminal, let's look for those three good signatures. Firstly, over here, we can see good signature from Andrew Chow. And note that it does say here, warning this key is not certified with a trusted signature. There is no indication that the signature belongs to the owner. But I went ahead and verified that myself by looking at Andrew's key base. So I know and I trust that that key is correct. So you can just ignore that output there. Next, we can see we have a good signature from Ben Carmen or Ben Carmen, not sure. And again, we have this warning, which we can safely ignore. And finally, we have a good signature here from Antoine. And again, we have this warning we can safely ignore. And now you'll also notice that it says, can't check signature, no public key, a few more times. Those are the developers whose key we did not import. So we only had to look for these three keys because we didn't import the rest of them. And for me, these three keys alone are enough to verify the authenticity of this file. So now that we know we have good signatures, I trust that this file is authentic. And because this file is authentic, when I ran this line earlier, this one over here in step five, let me go back to my terminal. So when I run this line, I get the name of my download as well as okay afterwards. Let me just find that and here we go. So now what that step, what step five does is verify that this is authentic using this file. And in step nine, we verified that this file was actually authentic in itself. So there we go. We have now verified the authenticity of Bitcoin Core. And I can go ahead and run this software knowing that it was actually created by the Bitcoin Core developers. And now let's move on to how to actually run Bitcoin Core 
which will be in part two.